Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and I'm here to bless you once again with another video of the FPS multiplayer stuff. Now, of course, as I've said in the first two videos, I think, this is very messy, but this is very much just, you know, my process of just creating a quick game to make a tutorial off of. So nothing is really structured, and I think a lot of people have quite a lot to learn off of that process. I think so far we already have something that's quite presentable. All we really need now is sort of the gameplay loop of the player actually dying and coming back to life, and we need to fix a little bit about our animation setup. So I'm just thinking what we could just do is we could just raise the speed of the animation depending on the fire rate of the weapon and we can actually just do that i would say in the a player weapon script and we could just do that on a weight i don't see why we wouldn't at least so at the same time of it getting this animator component oh sorry that's the network animator yeah so we need to get the regular animator component which if we do if try get components out animator and anim. and for that sake let's just we might as well just store it private animator i'm gonna call it underscore anim we might need a reference to it again in the future right now we technically don't but i don't see a point in not storing this reference animator and now what we can do is we can just reference the anim and but then we have the speed parameter and we want to speed this up to match the fire rate so what we can actually do is we can go find our animation if we just find for example the pistol here we have the shooting animation what i think we should do is we should make this over the span of one second or something like that and then just speed it up depending on the fire rate comparatively to one second so if for example we make it let me try and make it less than one second just to see how this looks because this is going to of course be horribly slow so it'll just shoot like that so what if we make it shoot up still fast it'll do like that it'll go up up fairly quick and then go down a bit slower i think that kind of works let's try and store that animation and yeah the rest of them should get the same animation and what we do now is we take the fire rate comparatively to one second so animation.speed should be equals to the that should be one divided by the fire rate i believe that should make it faster if i'm not wrong so now for example if we go and start the pistol should be at a certain speed and then the rifle should be a lot faster yeah as you can see now it at least somewhat tries to match i'm hitting something when walking backwards something's telling me it's probably the visors on the player that still has a box collider there we go that shouldn't be able to happen anymore there we go nope okay yeah so that that works now it'll speed up the animation depending on the fire rate of the weapon i think that's a quite cool way to go about it of course you could care a little bit more about your animation than what i'm doing here but i think it works the cool thing is we also do it in awake so it should also work on other players right so the next thing is we want to work on the gameplay loop of the player actually dying and coming back to life now generally what i like to do is i like to actually not despawn the player object i don't think it makes sense to despawn the player object because we just we want to keep it there instead of keep despawning it and spawning it i like keeping it around so in the player controller, I typically make a public dictionary of the type either network connection or client ID. I'm just going to do the client ID to the player controller. And this should, of course, be a static dictionary, my mistake. And this will just be called players. And this will be equals to a new dictionary of type into player controller, like so. And what we want to do here is on start client, we want to add it up here to the players. So players.add. And what we add is we add the owner ID and we add this. And on stop client, we'll just remove it again, like so. And there we go. This means now we always have a reference to the player controller. This is because I want the player controller to be responsible for disabling and enabling the player. So what we can do here is we can make a public static void disable player. And then we should send in the ID of the player. So we'll send in the client ID. What we'll do now is it'll take the players at the client ID. Or for that sake, actually, let's do if players.try value of the client ID out player controller player. The player that we have now here is the player that we want to disable. We can also just invert this as I've shown before. I personally like doing that. That way we don't need to go up levels. And now we can modify a bunch of things here. One thing is we want to disable the fact that they can move. They shouldn't be able to move around. But we also want to disable the visuals. So since this right now should probably be happening on the server. So that way we can ensure that this will always be called on the server by just making it a server, obviously. So require ownership false. Now this is run on the server and we want this to send out to all observers. So observers RPC are the ones that should actually disable it. So public void disable player observer like so and so now we can just call player dot disable player observer like that so now the server will just be responsible of sending it to the correct player because this is no longer static and now we can actually handling disabling it here so you can see that i do have this can move here which i don't actually think i'm using anywhere else i'm using it up here yeah okay it's being set to zero if not so if can move is false we're not going to be able to move which is good so first thing we want to do is we want to set the can move to false oh actually this should probably be toggle player i think that makes more sense so toggle pool and we want to send in the toggle in here and this should be the pool called toggle and now here it should be just be set to the toggle that way we can always enable them both on and off in here now the next thing is we want to find all the renderers so we want to first of all if try get component 
component renderer just to check if he has any renderer on him and this should be out renderer of course out renderer we're just gonna call it renderer might as well it started annoying me myself so player renderer dot enabled equals to toggle and now we also want to get all the renderers so we want to say renderer as an array all renderers equals to it's one of those words that keeps sounding weird the more you say it get components in children we want to get it off the type renderer like so and now we can loop through each one of these renderers so all renderers i'm just going to call it rend and then we can say rend.enabled equals to toggle that way we should loop through each of them now we need to do the exact same for the collisions so i think right now all the collisions are just on the player himself so let's just toggle that and also the player controller actually so instead of doing that we just do if try get component out collider i'm gonna call it collider and we can say collider dot enabled equals to toggle and we can do the same for the character controller if try get component out character controller oh we already have a reference of it of course character controller dot enabled equals to toggle and hopefully this should just work of course this is completely untested so let's just go and check it out uh, is there anything we need to set up i don't believe so let's just try it out as some error oh, of course the rpc is static shouldn't be this should not be static so we need a server in between here so we need to do what we need to do like that we need to make a private void toggle player server like so this needs to take an exact same stuff like this and this will call this and this will call this with the client id and toggle and actually this doesn't need the client id then i think that should do it so let me try and start it up start up the other screen and now let's try and shoot him till he hopefully dies let's take a weapon that's a little bit quicker 72 50 40 30 20 10 and he didn't disable right because we're not calling the toggle player at all i'm a genius so we go on to the player health and where the player should die we are going to call the toggle so we go into the die here and instead of saying player's dead we go to the player controller dot toggle player and we're just going to say the owner id because we're on the same and then false this is where we want him to die so we want him to be toggled off let's try again this time with the actual script there let's try again 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. And there we go. You can see he's, he's completely off now. Now we can still hit him, which means something is still enabled. So we can go have a look at what is still enabled. So there's still something here. The character controller is off. The capsule collider is still on. I thought we disabled the collider, but I guess I could be wrong. Maybe just found the character controller. Uh, so let's try and have a look at that. So we do try and grab the collider. My guess is it might be finding the character controller with this. Well, we know it's a capsule collider, so we could just look directly for that in our case. It shouldn't break anything. It just doesn't look for a generic collider, so let's try this instead. I mean, there's also a chance it doesn't find it, but that would be very odd. Try and take the shotgun. Is that faster? It's definitely not. Take the AK and go again. There we go. Try and run, and yeah, we go right through him this time. So yeah, it uh, was just because it was getting the character control instead. Now the capsule collider is also disabled, and now all we need to do is we just need to call this enable function again. As we can also see, he is standing right here, and we're not hitting him anymore either. So that all works. And now all we need is just for him to be able to respawn again. This could be either with a round system or a team deathmatch system. I think I'm just going to make them respawn when they die. And I think that's about it for this video. I'm going to keep it a little bit on the short end for this one. Um, because in the next video, I'm going to set up a game manager responsible for the whole respawning setup again. And I don't think we have time for that in this video. So hopefully this was helpful to you. If so, please do leave a like, comment and subscribe. You can also find help in the Discord below. And uh, yeah, I just hope you have a wonderful day.